going on guys? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle. Nadeska here with Academics and Wayno. Uh, Christina in the control room just wished me happy Black History Month, so I would like to extend this greeting to you fine gentlemen as well. That's good. Well, happy Black History Month, man. For real, for real, for real. Like, we, we, we gotta celebrate a different um, Black History moment each and every um, episode. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you wanna pick today's moment? I'm not a big fan of Black History Month, to tell you the truth. Because black people are you want to make it all year. Say, right, every day is black history. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying black history is American history, so you know. Yeah, but you try to you know highlight. You know, it's like cool. black people don't get much. I just want don't some get new, much. I just want some new don't stories. Don't get much, Wayno. You know what I mean? Okay. Just some new stories. That's all. I want some new stories to be told. How was y'all weekends? It was good. It was pretty chill. I did a lot of laundry, like two months worth of laundry. What you guys? What you do at? I've been so kind of like plugged out of the Super Bowl. Like the Super Bowl kind of snuck up on me, but I was just kind of like kicking it. And the Super Bowl happened, and to be honest, man, very bad, very bad. I lost some money on it. Oh. Let me tell you this, man. Don't bet on what you don't watch. It was yeah. still a good game, though. I saw the last maybe Fuck 30 game. minutes. Oh, okay. Damn. All right. When you lose money, let me tell you this. Like, the, the Super Bowl, by the way, like, it, it, in recap of the Super Bowl, uh -huh. because there's a, I would probably say about, like, 60% of the audience, they watch the commercial. The commercials were ass. Like, there was no really good ones this year. More and more. As I'm watching like the Super Bowl, like, and I've watched Super Bowl ever since I've came to the U.S., like the creativity is dying down, and it's just all about star power and cameos. Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel me? So it's like, oh shit, like why being Corday was in one. That no. was dope. You feel me? But like, like it, it's it's catching your attention by the wow factor. Like, oh shit, look at so and so. Rather than yo, this is mad creative. It used to be mini movies almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, again, if they got like. Six million dollar burn for like thirty seconds or a minute. Yeah, Why exactly. Not? Yeah, it was cool. I didn't do much this weekend myself. I took my son to the shooting range. Okay. Damn. Dead life. Okay. That's Wait, nice. you like, like to start busting off the guns? Yeah. How old you gotta be to be at the shooting range? Shit, pretty young. He's twelve, so. Damn, yeah. that's some Texas shit. Nah, whatever. We had fun this weekend. We had fun. Wait, which one? The one on uh? All right, we talk about, oh, that. We talk about anyway. <laughs> what you do? Um, like he I just clothes. She said. Stop you it. see how he don't pay attention to you, Nadeska? I, I, I don't know why. You don't notice when you him. change your hair, nothing. This is how he does you. Thank you, Wayno. What a it's friend, gonna make a about that. friend. He's going to make a comment about that, but you know what? Let's just get on to the show. Because, you know... <laughs> oh, man. Let's get on to the show. Let's go. Okay, so remember a few months ago, Jay-Z announced his new partnership with the NFL. He got a lot of criticism for it, um, and we thought we were going to see more of it during the Super Bowl, so we did. Uh, so the league aired the Inspire, part of their in Inspire Change initiative. So it was a 60-second PSA focused on a 2015 shooting of... Corey Jones, a police shooting. So he's the cousin of retired 49ers player Anquan Bolden. Uh, just a little bit of backstory because uh, TMZ Sports did post footage of Jay and Beyonce seated during Demi Lovato's performance of the national anthem ahead of the Super Bowl. So Colin Kaepernick reposted this on his Instagram story, the article along with the caption from a fan which said, I thought we were past kneeling though. Um, also, in an interview with the New York Times, published before the Super Bowl, Jay said that one of the reasons that he actually partnered with the NFL was so he could help push Kaepernick's message of social justice. He said, no one is saying he hasn't been done wrong. He was done wrong. I would understand if it was three months ago, but it was three years ago, and someone needs to say, what do we do now? Because people are still dying. So he also goes on to say he's fine. He could deal with some criticism as long as real people are being hurt and marginalized and losing family members. And yes, I can take a couple rounds of negative press. What do you guys think of his response? Also that they aired the commercial at the time and then Kaepernick still responding in this way. Um, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, man. <laughs> What? Rock Nation will cancel me for this one. I, I gotta keep it true. Hey, I'm gonna be honest, like the more I watch this, like, you know, I'm 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 a little bit confused by Jay. Um because I, I feel like there's a lot of mixed messages there. And I do believe he's i I wish he would just come out and say, listen, man, I think his overall message is this. I don't think Jay ain't no he ain't no social justice warrior. He ain't none of that. I think he's a businessman. Who will in? What the fuck is that sound? I was tripping. Right. <laughs> uh, I think he's a businessman who will use capital he makes through business ventures mm -hmm. to give back and try to help on social issues. That's about it, right? So I, you know, I think a lot of people looked at this NFL thing as some holistic, like, yo, he's for change. No, he's he's about he's about doing business. And I think the biggest message I'm getting this, now, historically speaking. 
like all the things he, he's done in the past. Well, well I'm, I'm not saying that, but but, but I'm, I'm saying this particular venture. Okay. I think this was to say, hey, let's not isolate a partner who we could benefit by doing business with. Because honestly, like, like even when, and this is where the confusion comes, if y'all are wondering, because I see Wayne about to jump in. The New York Times article, I think a lot of people, the narrative was that he turned down a prior Super Bowl offer right. because he, he was either standing with Cap or he just wasn't on that. It was just a conflict. Of he clearly just That's said. That's not what it was. Okay, so he said that basically they, they wanted him to come perform Run This Town in 2018 and bring out Kanye and Rihanna. Right. And he wasn't trying to, like, you know, do yeah. it on his terms. It should have just been him. Okay. But, but that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The narrative and the thought of why he didn't do the Super Bowl before is that he wasn't down with how they were dealing with certain things at the time, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just on what they wanted in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. It was that he was basically saying, hey, if y'all going to treat Cap like that, this and third, we're good and I'm good. According to, I'm just reading off what he said in the New York Times article. He said yeah. it was because they were requiring me to bring other acts with me, which by the way, let's be very honest, we haven't seen just even like any performer, just a solo performer that, that don't bring out special guests, or some like guest acts that that perform some other shit, right? right. Yeah. Like you remember Missy came out a couple years ago. Like so, this is kind of standard. They want a whole package deal. You might be the headliner, but there's gonna be a couple other people unannounced, right? Mm. But it seems like that was the issue. Yeah, right? that is surprising. That's not what. The, okay, so that I was the issue why he didn't perform. Mm -hmm. Not the a whole other shit that we've been dressing it up and painting it to be, which is. Yo, he turned it down because they treat and kept no. So again, when when I when it comes to now we now we he partnered with the NFL, then I see him sent down, right? And then also we got to think about his statements when he was in the press conference with Roger Goodell and he said, "Yo, we're past kneeling," but he's mm -hmm. sitting. I guess it's a little bit different, but still, you know, he, you're still sending you're still sending a pretty strong message sitting at the Super Bowl. I feel like. It's it's a little bit confusing right. for me to understand where he's at with it. So the only takeaway I could have, and again, that's my first point, which I made, is mm -hmm. that I think he disagrees with Kaepernick trying to isolate and boycott this business because he's saying we could probably use them. And, and, and actually, that goes that okay. goes that goes for a lot of things. Like in America. so, I'm curious if Wayno agrees with you. First of all, on the mixed messages, like how do you feel finding out the reason he actually turned down the Super Bowl? I mean, it was creative more than the social justice. I was surprised at that, but like honestly, I don't I don't think that. I, I felt like that whole article was really to explain to people in a nutshell what Rock Nation is. Like it was more of that than actually what I got as far as what he was doing about social justice. It was telling everybody everybody's roles, what they do, what they're doing with the company, mm -hmm. not from like a music standpoint. It was more about philanthropy. You know, they did talk about social injustice, about um, bringing in athletes and artists who come from, they said, Jay says 75% of the artists or athletes that he bring in probably came from poverty. Mm -hmm. Him telling Meek Mill to reach back for his guys instead of going back to the place where they come from, et cetera. So I, when I read the whole thing, I just didn't get anything about his intent being wrong. You know, they, they, people speculated about the number of money that they had gotten from the NFL to put to a social injustice, but it's just to a social injustice. I thought that, like, w what you said prior, that was the most important part of it. Like, if you're, if, if you're doing business with a, another company and you're using their capital to try to bring awareness, I mean, isn't that doing it in a nutshell? Is that, isn't that kind of like both hands washing the other? I agree with you to a certain extent, except I think, you know, and, and some of this isn't the fault of Jay himself. Mm -hmm. I think it's the narrative that's just been running around it. Yeah. You get me? Like, it's been running like, yo, yo. And also certain things he said, when you say we're past kneeling, mm -hmm. that obviously past kneeling means we're, we're now at, I think he said something, something Action, actions. Actionable. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. action, yeah. right? People are now thinking, that must mean you're about to do some shit that's like 
very well, different than what we're, we're even seeing now. Well, I just think that the the, the thing is, is that people got to stop thinking because Jay grew a, a nappy a nappy afro that he's going to be standing in front of the White House throwing up a fist. I think that's what people think is supposed to happen. Like, Jay is going to be standing on front lines protesting with people. I don't think, I think that's what people are imagining. And what's actually happening is him raising the capital to try to um, combat social injustice. Like, the, the thing with, um, with Meek, he said, uh, I think Mike Rubin, for the social reform project, they raised like he raised like sixty million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, to to kind of change the inner workings of the probation system. If if, I mean, we everything can't get fixed tomorrow, but is that something that's getting fixed? So I, I'm I'm just looking at it from this standpoint. When it comes to Kaepernick, I got some information from one of my homegirls that her husband is an NFL player, and she was saying that I think Kaepernick is still a, an employee of the NFL because he's a free agent, mm -hmm. but the stuff that they're making him do to try to get a job is by their terms and not how it usually goes. That's the unfair part I see on Kaepernick's side. But when I look at what Jay is saying about, yo, it was three months ago, it's now three years later, somebody has to say what's gonna happen and then we see the things that are actually happening with the with the um, social reform or you know other things that they plan to activate, I think that there's pro some progress made. I just don't think that Jay's intent after reading a bit of the article, excluding all the Rock Nation job shit, is ill intent. I just don't think it's ill intent. And I think that the, the reason why everybody is giving it ill intent is because they're expecting him to be my son, or you know what I mean? Like standing on the front lines and shit, and that's just not gonna it happen. This doesn't help Kaepernick's, I think, his responses to Jay, like him posting commentary like that. Yeah, I don't. I'm, well, I'm well I, I, I do. Narrative. Well, well, you, you gotta understand how he probably also feels. Like, I, like Jay kind of was slid into, like, this role and, and whether he wants to acknowledge it or anyone wants to acknowledge it like like I, I dare anyone to sit here and tell me that the nfl like at least partially didn't do this deal with jay to help pacify kaepernick that's a fact like he they definitely said hey we get with him he's gonna his like cultural equity is gonna help negate what kaepernick got going on right and really of course, you don't. Think I mean, so? uh, well, I'm just saying, like, as far as all right. So when we look at the PSA that went up, mm -hmm. what is that? Is that just to? Is is that a Jay Z a Kaepernick issue? Is that a everybody issue? You know what I mean? Like that's that's all I'm asking. It's like, I I get where you coming from with the using him as a token, the token guy, to wave in front of everybody. Like, hey, Jay says we're cool again, y'all. We should all rock with the NFL. I I get that, but I'm saying so when shit actually happens. What do we gauge that at? Like, does that not matter? Is it just a money thing? Like, is nobody else affected, or is it just big players making tons well, of money? Well, well, that's exactly what it is. What I mean to pacify is that, like, number one, and I'm not sitting here, I'm not defending Kaepernick by any stretch of the imagination, because I do believe that he's been, he's been kind of a horrible front man for the plight. Doesn't speak. We see him do things which you kind of have to like use common sense to kind of put some reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes he's also speaking through his um, wife or girlfriend, right? So I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's just that he basically was at the point to say, yo, we're boycotting these motherfuckers. And, and, and with, whether people were or not, Jay was the person to say, nah, nah, hold up. You get me? And that deal was the, the pacifying effect of everybody saying, okay, cool, let's see what's up. So the, the PSA, would you call that part of their pacifying plan or is it an action action item? Going from kneeling during the anthem to airing a one minute ad like this, addressing the same issue during the Super Bowl. I do think that was dope, but I'm confused about why he said. Why Jason? Why what? Why what? I'm confused why Jay and Beyonce said. That, okay. I guess well, that's I mean, a, that, a lot that, of confusion. That I mean, at the same time... It, you you I can't think, make a statement that we're past kneeling. But I think the national anthem, sit, sitting and kneeling at the national anthem, isn't totally predicated on what Kaepernick's message was. It's like, uh, some people just don't agree with the song. You know, the third verse that's come taken... On, it. Come no, on, I'm, Wayne, I'm not... Pat, it, listen, I don't, I, don't, I don't work for Rock Nation. I don't give a fuck about none of that. So, like, I'm not saying... He's well aware of, 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 of that the spotlight on him, what's just been... Um, so if he stands, he, what does that say? If he stands, it means he's in lieu with all the other so shit. So if he sits, what does that mean? 
it means that he's actually kind of agree with so that. So there's no fucking, there's no, there's no, there's no. No, no, but, but once you took the deal, you got to stand, my nigga. No, you, you took high. the deal. Yo, 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 you're, so, you're my not nigga, I'm just saying, so that why? No, 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 no I'm not. I'm gonna keep it 100. I'm not as well versed in football as I am in basketball. I don't know as much about. I know that I know how to sport. I know the sport. I know how it's played. I don't know the intricacies of how I know basketball. What are we? What, that's why I always say, what are we protesting? Niggas did not stop playing football. There's more. Th this is more of an issue than people dying from the sport. It's more. I see more of of Kaepernick and Jay Z and them going back and forth more than awareness about CTE and the effects of it and how <laughs> kids is still playing a sport, a, a sport that our bodies is not made for uh, more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I see that more than anything. So I don't know what the fuck we protest at the end of the day. Wait, no. I'm just saying that. No, like, no, no. I hear you. Jay's comments when he signed the deal was mm -hmm. that... And, and, and he didn't say... You I, felt so, like it was dismissive, him saying, we're past it now, we need action items. Kneeling so now you think sign, he's pandering or... Was a form of protesting, okay. right? So I'm, I'm kind of putting words into his mouth, but you know, he says we're past kneeling. He was basically saying we're just, we're past just protesting, right? Mm -hmm. And he was gonna do some actionable items or put them on the table center. I do believe, you know, even though they made him like, yo, yo, he's the, he's the head of the circus. He could throw all the, the Super Bowl events and like all the little entertainment stuff and sell some t-shirts, great. But I do think that that PSA is dope. I do think that if he could put some pressure on the NFL owners to have a tryout for Kaepernick, even though it didn't go well, I think that's dope. I think those. I think that's what Jay's doing. So your big issue, yeah. No, 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 no. no. no wait. Well, well, according to teams, according allegedly teams, he, he did. There, there was a right. allegedly he had some. So, Ak, your whole issue here is at this point you feel like he shouldn't be sitting because he said we needed action items. Yeah, because you said we passed the other nigga shit. Because if if that wasn't the case. You would have defended. He didn't specifically. No, you would have defended saying, him. Okay. You would have defended him, right? Not we're past it. You would have defended what he did mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, I'm just here to help and add on to it." So you just Otherwise, don't like his, if he had worded it differently from jump, this would have been different. I it feels like that's it. really a sticking point. The action items. I, 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 I would have okay. felt different. My last question is: is like, so does it make a difference if he sits at the if he's at a basketball game and he sits? Is it the same message or not? No, because he has a deal with the NFL. And, and, and again, we understand that Nealon was a sign of protest with the NFL. So mm -hmm. if I see Jay sitting, I'm thinking that Jay might be protesting. What is Jay protesting? Mm -hmm. If you have a deal with the motherfuckers. Okay. Again, you, you have a deal to change it. So is the deal not working out? Let us know. All right, so let's wrap what on. What are you protesting? Is really upset about the mixed messages. I'm a little Wait, I just feel like the intent, I, I don't feel like the intent is ill. Like, okay. you know what I mean? I don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel like the intent is ill and I don't feel like by this deal being done or whatever's being done with this deal that is hurting, that, that is hurting the people who are actually affected, the people who have lost their fam lost family members or friends to police brutality right. or affected by police brutality. Look, like he says, he's not, a f okay, you still no, have more. No, funny enough, I agree with Wayne over there. Oh. I don't think Jay has like ill intent, but it's this very fine line you have to almost straddle, right? Right. And that fine line is that, hey, listen, it, it's kind of being, it's like, it's like straddling line of being cool in corporate. Mm. I'm with y'all, but I got to do the business too. And then you explain it away by saying, uh, listen, yeah, we can't pass this. We trying to move. But if you don't question his intent, in, that he has ill intent, can you then just like, uh, give him a little wiggle room? So he probably didn't have the best choice of words. I'm sure he would admit that at this point. The way th that sentence has but been But I'm still scrutinized. confused by the actions. Okay. If you're sitting, I'm thinking you're protesting. Okay, so let's just wait and see how this really unfolds. Right. Um, so we saw the PSA, we all agree that that was powerful, so maybe there's more to come that will change your mind mm -hmm. and make the messages less mixed. Wow. All right, how about this? Um, so last week we played a clip of uh, Diddy's pre-Grammy speech where he was just basically saying they need to respect hip hop and black musicians. This clearly rubbed Mace the wrong way. So he got out on Instagram on Friday and called out Diddy for his alleged shady business practices. So in a long post, he goes on to say that, you know, Diddy still owns his publishing rights despite several attempts to buy them back as recently as a couple days ago. He said, I heard you loud and clear when you said that you are now for the artists. And to that, my response is, if you want to see change, 
you can make a change today by starting with yourself. He said Diddy has starved him and treated him unfairly. Um, that he offered him $2 million a few days ago to buy back his publishing. He's only gotten 20000 from it so far. Allegedly, Diddy's response was um, if he can match what the European guy offered, that's the only way he'd get it back. He says this is not black excellence at all. It's not the first time that we've Act, heard. Act started off really well with the last topic, so I really <laughs> want to act in. I'm glad this happened. I'm glad this happened because this goes back to the topic we were having last week. About Meek? Yes. And because this is the music business, the business of a lot of vultures. Mm -hmm. And while I understood what Meek said, this is the, the, the prototypical example that now because a nigga sh shares your skin color, means he might not try to get you as well. Right. The thought in 2020 that somebody got bought your whole publishing for 20K, mm -hmm. you know, now people get on differently in this and third. It sounds very ludicrous. When Mace, when Mace was signed, that was probably almost status quo then. But to even see this continue for 20 plus years, mm -hmm. you get to realize this is the business of vultures. And despite if they look white, black, brown, yellow, or red, in reality, you it, it, there's no one who has your best interest at heart, but you and hopefully a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you walk in a room, oh, this is a white executive. Oh, man, they're going to do me wrong, but oh, that's my brother. You dap him up, you know what I mean? You do the Harlem Shake with him. Yeah, he's still going to get you too. Um, whatever the case is with this, I, I'm, I'm actually shocked that, you know, I had no idea that, you know, Diddy still owned all this publisher. You know, of course, the fame story is about yeah. um, the locks and, you know, that was returned. However, they sell down if that was just sell just straight up like, all right, I got it back or, you know, it was, it was a deal done there. Um, th this kind of does feel a little bit more than business, though. Maybe a little it bit. It seems worse. like this. I guess really the Grammy thing triggered him because I feel like he was on Rap Fix a few years ago when I was still at MTV and said the same thing. Like, mm. Diddy wanted like an arm and a leg to get out of that deal, but clearly it seems like nothing has changed. Yeah, um, yo, you know what's crazy about this? It's like, everybody be doing everybody dirty in this shit. Because on one hand, you know, you do have Mace. I, I, I think like 20K, this is uh, this is 20 years ago when he did this this deal too. He and no shit, this is over 20 years. Yeah, it's 24. Yeah, this is over okay. 20 years. Um, but 20K around that time probably equivalent to damn near 75, 100 today, back in the 90s. Like uh -huh. I'm just talking about the value of a mm -hmm. dollar. You know what I mean? How you could use it. Um, I think when Mace when he did this, this is the thing. When when he when he sold it to him, he he sold it to him for 20k, right? He tried to buy it back for 20k or something like that. It's worth more than it is than it was before. Now, did I, I wouldn't say that this is right. I would never do. I, I don't even get into my artist publishing other than getting a percentage off of a commission. I don't get into owning their ownership or stuff. But the biggest problem with the music industry is that everybody does everybody dirty. Artists do uh, executives or or uh, managers dirty. Managers do artists dirty, executives do manage, managers dirty. It's not one thing. It's like, it's not, because everybody always has this thing about the music industry and how, like, the people who are in the highest places do people dirty. Everybody does bad business all around. And I used to give uh, Cash Money the benefit of the doubt because I felt like when they first started, they just came into a lot of money fast and they was doing so much that they wasn't paying attention and they had, their, like, Birdman had his lawyers acting in his best interest to the artists as opposed to, him and Wayne having a conversation, so he might have not known. But this shit just keeps on happening. You All know? right, listen. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, oh man. Listen, I actually do go by, and maybe I shouldn't, because you know I aspired to be at one time. Well, um, I've always like I've always heard they said behind every goddamn billionaire is about a billion other motherfuckers that nigga screwed over, mm -hmm. and you know like <laughs> no, oh some real shit like. Like you look at you look at somebody who's you know really successful, and you forget some of the niggas they had to backstab, betray, mm -hmm. throw under the bus, squeeze out of a deal, finesse, and you know that might be right. Now I, I do want to give Diddy the benefit of that because you know what? Again, as angry as Mace felt because he was typing still a feels, lot right? of yeah, no, of course still yeah. feels right. Like I do think. The reason why we look at, like, Dame, Dame looks crazy a lot of times when he's speaking about Jay. Mm -hmm. 
right? Despite even if he's speaking factual shit, like it could be historical fact. And even even Mace, like I'm not saying he looks crazy at all, but like, you know, we're going to have that sympathy for Diddy because honestly, these dudes like Jay Diddy, they're cultural figures, you know, and we don't want to think about them like that. Right. You know, like, and, and we're not saying they, they did all bad business, but you never know. It could have been at a time in the industry where that was status quo. Yo, all right, cool. Just get buy your artist publishing off rip. That's Yo, what I'm saying. I, I just want like you know what's crazy. All these, all these artists that talk all this black and white shit. Like how many of them are they make? How many other black people are they making millionaires? That's what I want to know. Hmm. For real, that, that's what I want to know because like, and I'm not. To me, I, I don't look at. I never was taught to hate nobody, so I don't look at everything is a colored thing. Only dealing in certain instances, but like, I know a lot of these. A lot of these people, they ain't none of them take a chance on me when I wanted a job. Yeah. For real. Like, they just... Way to hold it personally. I'm, nah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> just holding it. I'm, I'm not. I'll be going through the same thing. I'll be looking like, yo, these but, niggas never fuck with me, bro. But now nah, I'm going to keep it 100, though, bro. It's like when I look at a lot of these people who say all this shit, how many millionaires did they make? Like, I'm, it, when we looking at... um, And that's back to the conversation we was having last week, not specifically the May shit. But even with the, the May shit, it's like... Yo, that's that's never gonna stop, yo. Never. This is why I be telling, I be saying to these kids, like, don't think that a million dollars makes you special. Look at the terms of what you're signing. Mm -hmm. You walk in the room, they give you this large amount of money and don't tell you what you have to do to get it for real. They just say, give us all the files for the song and just go ahead. And then after you spend up all your money and you come back, you ain't got shit, and you like, yo, why can't I put out music? Well, you signed this right here. Nobody told you nothing. But it's the same type of people doing it to you too. Wow, guys, thank you. A very bleak and accurate assessment of the music industry. <laughs> if you guys wanted some truth today, Tired of niggas. crazy, Tired. man. <laughs> You're right. We don't start of all the fake support. There's a lot of that out there, too. Yeah, yeah. But they're the ones to come for you the fastest. Um, all right, complete left turn. I guess we've had enough uh, music and uh, business talk over the weekend. It was rumored that 50 Cent allegedly hit French Montana at a nightclub in Miami. Some video surfaced, but it doesn't really provide much context. So French did jump on Instagram to tell his side of the story. He denied all of this happened. He said, I went to the club, you was hosting, you heard I was coming, you walked out the back, you was in the car. I wish you would touch me. Uh, tell people the real story. I went to the club, you was hosting. You heard I was coming, you walked out the back, you was in the car. Anybody touch me? Touch me? Look. Nobody touched me. Handsome at gmail.com. I wish you would touch me. What's going on with French and uh, 50? <laughs> We go first. Again? I don't know. I mean, yo, I, I'm confused about them two every week. I don't know if they, like I just be thinking that they playing a lot of times. I be thinking that they playing. I don't think, I don't think they're playing. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now of course I don't think that they playing I now. Personal. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, <laughs> fuck. I seen the video, like the, the video. Was, so there's a video floating around where 50 nor nor French are in, in the are video, in it, right. right? But. Someone who I guess was at the club captioned, yo, 50 just knocked out French, right? They captioned it on like their little story. And you see kind of like security guards or just muscle niggas in black mm -hmm. kind of walking back and forth to the suburban. So you assume, okay, maybe something happened, right? So we were, of course, waiting for the, t you know, TMZ always got the, the 1080p footage, right? So we waiting for that. We didn't get it. Um, and initially when I saw the first fan thing, I'm like, all right, we're going to get it. We didn't get it. And then French posts this. And to be honest, I'm not mad at French posting. He should post it because sometimes, you know, rumors could really just take over um, and be the narrative instead of the truth. But then he had the hoodie on. Oh, you think he was hiding? The hoodie, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like, the way he was... Like, you can't, you can't show your face with the hoodie and then he took it off for a second and put it right back on. I don't know. Like, it looked... It looked funny. Oh, I need to watch it again. I wasn't it looked looking that closely. Yeah, nah, he was like, he was showing one side of his face. He, he showed the other side. Of like, oh, it's it <laughs> like, it's like, you know, when you record it on your phone, you're like, oh, shit. So I don't know. Again, okay. you know, maybe, maybe it was BS. Like, I'm, I'm really hard pressed to even think that just even logistically and, and you know, Wayne is a manager. So like, you know, he's been around a lot of these crazy artist filled events. Um, like. Super Bowl weekend, y'all in Miami. Everybody and their mom is in Miami. I would I would think that your team is aware of 
who's going to be at a club, who else is hosting. Yo, when uh, this happened with uh, Drake and Diddy, Drake didn't post one of those videos, right? Didn't he just post a Drake picture didn't post of his anything. arm in a sling There was no video. <laughs> like, in studio. Was there no video? Nah, I don't think he... he nah, I think it, he posted was kind of quiet though. for... He did. I, I just remember, like, it was... And that's not to take nothing away from Drake. I don't. He didn't post anything. Neither did Diddy. Like, nobody... I was wondering about the playbook, because I know the rappers do the No One Hit Me video, but I think Drake posted a photo a few days later. Listen, a lot of, a lot of shit goes down that people don't talk about. So, you know... I guess, you know, French was clearing up, you know, the rumors yeah. of what could have possibly happened. But I, I, I just think that if you clearing up the rumors, yo, I ain't gonna lie. angles. Like, pause. You, you, you can't have no hoodie on. You might have just be shirtless, pause. Like, just like, yo, don't bruise it. Shirtless. Like, no, what I mean yeah, is like. how did it go there? Bro, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, who knows? You might have a knot at the back of your head. You might have, like. Listen, I, this, we all know 50 Cent. If, if something happened. 50 would have went crazy on Instagram. <clears throat> well, I don't know. You don't think I, so? I don't know. Like, to be honest, I think 50 trolls a lot with bullshit. Mm -hmm. Real shit, I don't... Like, again, you know where 50's from. Like, real shit, I think 50 might just chill you back. Know, 50 don't troll with real <laughs> shit? <laughs> no, Are no, you kidding me? Hold on, real shit that he did? What? That could... <laughs> Who knows? It's 50 Cent, bro. It's the I, person It's the person that said, yo, a, a life costs $3,000 where I'm from. I could start World War III with the money I got. Like, you, he don't troll, like, no, no, with no, real no. shit? Because, you know, and really bringing up a, 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 another bad situation, but, like, when the whole thing happened with um, him and, like, Slowbucks on, on um, or Slow from Slowbucks on Summer Jam stage, I don't think he was trolling like that. Like, people saw it. Was he Yo, trolling? He posted mad. He was Did posting he? mad funny shit, bro. He was posting a lot of shit at that time. Oh. Uh, Come on, this is 50 Cent. No, no. Bro. 50 might okay, be the most right. petty Hold nigga up, man. Planet. Wait, no, give me a second, boy. What? What's going on? He trying to find one moment where all 50 right. didn't troll. No, I'm saying. Shit. What? 50 said last week, rest in peace to Kobe. We all are still mourning. He said he was going to change his actions. And if he did do something, maybe he's respecting that. We're on the gram. We're in a period of mourning. Let's not go against what you just said you were going to do it's in memorial. It's 50 Cent academics. Are you fucking kidding me? Bro. Let's not go against it. It's 50 like, Cent. Yeah. You acting like you don't know who the fuck face. 50 Cent is. I know who 50 right. is. How many times he I said he was 50? Right. Right. Come on, If yo. this really happened... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it happened 50 going to wait until Kobe's laid to rest. Respectfully. I mean, I hope it because, did, but like, it's 50 Cent. No, for real. Yeah, because I think he's really trying to live up to his oath that he isn't going to be acting a certain type of way. I guess. But I think nothing happened. I just think that, yo, like, if, if I was anybody around friends or your friends, you got to do that without a hoodie, bro. They're going to think, like, a video like that, people are going to think you're hiding something from them. You have such a deeply analytical mind, academics. Right. Wow. You didn't think that? Well, We're on that back. No, I didn't think, I didn't think no, about that. I was looking to see if it was someone right. aside, but he showed both yo, sides. Would you guys respect a rapper covering up a bruise, like, with makeup? You know, Hell no. Money? So I, question. No, I was no. in the shade room comments. They kept saying that. Oh, really? But 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 again, women would know that Sephora treatment way better than I would. No, I respect. Mm. I respect to the fullest. If you take an L and you like, I took an L. Like I, no. that's what I respect. I respect. Yo, if you Does get your ass beat, respect this. If, if, if you as an artist, I don't give a fuck who you is. Okay, as a no. man, you get your ass beat eh? and you say, Yo, I ain't gonna lie, I took an L. Like I respect that more Wayno, than covering it up I'm with makeup. I'm telling you right now. I don't think Prince did beat, that at all. I'm in. The desk is makeup chair before she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, y'all just color my face. Well, but wait, I, nobody can you, catch I was gonna say, you of all people, there's <laughs> yo, no need to cover it up. There's nah, no nah. Need. Well, you, yo, the you have memes, never pretended to the be memes tough. of the black eye on everyday struggle <laughs> talking about. No, cover this shit up. <laughs> okay, academics. Foundation. Oh, man. I need something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know about that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Wayne's album before we go. So Wayne dropped album number 13, Funeral. He's been teasing this one since 2016. This is the follow-up to Carter Five, which we got in 2018. 24 songs. It's a lot of songs. A lot of features, too. People like Big Sean, Lil Baby, Take Off, 2 Chains, production from Manny Fresh, Michael Made It, Cool and Dre, Murder Beats, and more. Uh, he does tribute Kobe on the track uh, Bing James, which is number eight. There's a 24 second um, moment of silence before it continues on. So there was a lot of anticipation for this project. Four years of teasing. What'd you think? I thought it was a thoughtful project by him. And also one that again, and you know when we did the over and under and we were talking about what he's going to do this and third. I always, I always thought like this particular project because we've heard it floating around for many years that 
this is more like passion more than like, yo, hey, let's just chase these commercial hits or try to fit in. And honestly, that's what I got. You know, like, you know, he linked up. Like, it was, it was great to see him and Manny Fresh, you know, do some records. And, you know, if anything I got away from this album was that Wayne still really cares about being one of the best rappers. Now, again, that's why I kept saying this is different than the Carter series. Because the Carter series, I feel like he also want to have some of the biggest hits. Mm -hmm. This wasn't that, if you ask me. This was, yo... Yo, Wayne just want to rap. You get me? And, and it's kind of like, I, I don't want to compare it to like Eminem Kamikaze because, you know, Eminem kind of had like something to prove. And I don't think Wayne has had anything to prove um, in a long while, honestly, because of just how consistent he's been. But I, I think Wayne just wanted to let people know like, yo, nigga, I'm like one of the nicest. And you, shit, even J.I.D. like co-signed it. I, I, I think people who enjoyed just rapping mm -hmm. enjoyed this project. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was good. I kind of compare. If I would compare it to another Wayne project, I say like I'm not a human being. I mean, like I would compare it to that. Um, I, I think it was it was good overall. Like Mama Mia, I ran that back a few times. Um, it it just showed that Wayne, like no matter what, like he still has the ability. Like the ability never goes anywhere. You know what I mean? Like his ability never goes anywhere. I didn't care what the songs were basically about, if it was introspective, if he had something to talk about. <laughs> it just was like Wayne rapping, and I could just always appreciate that. And in this, I mean, I watched the Drink Champs interview prior to listening to the album, and um, it's just packaged, everything is packaged really well. I think that Wayne is the artist that, you know, we have to give his respect while it's due. Like, you you have to. He's He's been in every, damn near every era of hip hop from the, quote unquote golden era to the early 2000s, mid 2000s when it got kind of weird up until now. Like it, it just shows like longevity. Like he's the the artist artist, like for real. Like I, I really watching that interview, like really watching the interview because there's so many great stories mm -hmm. and then listening to Wayne rap, it really made me say, damn, like I really love this nigga as an artist, like for real. And, and I add that, you know, um, I, I think there was a time, at least for me, I, I won't speak for everyone else, but there was a time that I felt just rapping Wayne, and maybe it was maybe in the last, well, he hasn't put out that many projects, but like after like maybe 2012 and so, right? And I mean, he didn't really put up much after that, but um, some of the punchlines were getting a little tired and it was getting a little lazy, you know, like he was, he had a bunch of like, Yo, compare me to the toilet, or just, and he got and, some of those on this album too. <laughs> Ball shit, and kind of like he no, 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 still but, saying that shit. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, granted, of course, mm -hmm. but like, um, I do think that he challenged himself a little bit to like not rely on it as much as you know, like because because that, that for as great as these guys are, like Wayne and even uh, I'll throw Nicki into it, like mm -hmm. you realize over a very long career, ten years plus. There's those fallback. It's like the, the the even though you know Pac's career was was shorter, but the, mm -hmm. um, the Hennessy and Enemy shit, like you know certain shit, yeah, like yeah, yo, yeah. all right, okay, get all right. It <laughs> but um, I I feel like he was challenging himself a little bit. You know, one thing I'll say, even though as you bring up the Drink Champs interview, you know, you know he's in his own world. Yeah, yeah. I know. We're gonna play a couple of cl clips because it's so funny. I, I don't know if that that's the best thing because I do believe that's why sometimes we feel he's lazy lyrically because he's just he's just not in tune at so all. A lot of artists are like that though. Yeah. But, I don't know, I feel no, like no, this is I a different like, level. Yeah, right. but I feel like he's earned it and we've known this, right? I feel yeah. like he says he wants to watch ESPN and just skateboard and whatever, he's paid his dues. He doesn't have to know any of these people. All right, so a couple clips. Here's him talking about how he thought 21 Savage was a group. For some reason, I mistake 21 Savage for a damn group. I remember when I was oh, asking, doing, that does sound when they asked me, oh, group, I said like they got twenty. I said like, they got twenty-one fucking little rappers <laughs> in one group, and I said and I, I was so serious. I was like, I was like, man, that's like a new Wu Tang. And the person with the mic was like, you serious right now? Huh? I was like, I'm very serious. All right, and one more where he's saying he also has no idea who QC and TDE were. Quality control music or TDE? I don't know what TDE is. Kendrick Lamar though. Oh, you, I thought you was literally... See, see, that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. No trick questions, man. I really, I really thought he was asking for quality question. control music. You know, like, I didn't, I, so now I got to go back. So, so quality control music is somebody too. Yeah, that's um, Beagles. Beagles in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
no, quality no, control no, with somebody I, else. Too. See, from trying to get into the mind of Wayne, I understand why he didn't get that one, <laughs> only because how Nori said it. He said he didn't say QC. He said quality control music, and then he said TDE. So I'm thinking he's thinking TDE is a, another acronym for something else. Of course, you know who TDE is. J Rock <laughs> on his album, and he, he he was on J Rock first single on in 2008. Like he definitely know who TDE is. But yeah, he lived that 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 interview was insane. Salute to Nori. That shit was amazing. I ain't gonna lie, it was dope. Yeah, no, nah, I mean that's exactly. I don't know. If that's a good thing though. What? Isn't it a good thing that like he's so like culturally absent. I love I, it. Well, I wouldn't call him. I, the I, thing I, is, I remember when he like he was he did an interview a while back and he was saying that yo, his daughter was putting him onto art. I said that's fine. You know he's Asian. His daughter, by the way, is like you <clears> know, <throat> she she's of current age and I'm. Just hearing him say, like, he didn't understand certain things they were saying, I was like, damn, like, when you rap, then does your music become dated because you're just not in with anything current? Not that you got to know artists, mm -hmm. but I feel like you're absent of the moment and you're just kind of doing you on a different planet. Yeah, I, I mean, when he explains his life about how he he only watches sports, he doesn't really watch anything else. I mean, I think... Kanye was like that for a little bit too. Like remember Kanye would say he don't have a phone and like the only way to contact him is to email somebody else to speak to him. It's, I don't know what it is to live at that level of like stardom and fame and having as much money as he has. He probably just blocks himself off from the world. Yeah, I mean for some people disconnecting for periods of time is good, right? To regenerate the creative part of you, but also he's been doing this since he was like 16. Like Younger who cares, that. bro, yeah. you should just Watch ESPN and he's the person board. that can yeah. get you. Like, you can't say, it. oh man, this, this oh, ain't right, Lil Wayne. Or, he's the person I don't care if yeah. you don't know yeah. who, who niggas is. Well, well, going on a tangent here, and y'all know who I'm about to bring up as well, but like in, in terms of longevity wise and also like being at the edge um, of leading culture, is like, you know, that 2000, I'm gonna say seven, when he was dropping on the mixtapes, pretty much almost to like 2012 wave. Like, he led, like, so he was the guy everybody was trying to aspire to be, right? So it's fine at that moment for him not to be watching anyone, right? Um, but I'm wondering if... Is there something you, that's the thing, he already had those moments. I don't yeah, feel like, I don't need him to recreate anything. I don't need him to lead the, you know what I mean? He already had it, it's done. Uh, well, and it was a beautiful I, moment I, I, in time for like 10 years. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm comparing, like, say, you know, Drake. Right, Drake is someone who people say, "Hey, listen, he's gonna, he, he knows a new guy coming out. He's gonna like fucking do a song with him, or something yeah. like that." The, what's the what's the strategy really for longevity? And by the way, Jay did it too. What? Jay did it too. In ten years from now, what do you, yeah, you but, think Drake is still gonna know every new rapper dropping? You think he should not be where Wayne is no, in terms of being? I, I think aware? Wayne's unique. I think but, Wayne but. and Wayne and M is unique. <laughs> mm -hmm. They could isolate and close themselves off from whatever. And you know they've been consistent with that. They were never on any any other thing. But I don't think any other artist. Could. There was a point in time where mm -hmm. Wayne knew who every rapper was, and he signed all of them. You know what I mean? That's how I look at he it. He like, did give us. He gave us Nikki, Drake. Well, not gave us. Let me not say Nikki, that. Nikki Drake. You know nah, he, he gave us Drake. Like, let's keep Whoa. it a hundred. Wait, wait, wait. Nikki no, no, Drake. Gave us, currency. But, no, but he gave it. But but if you listen to some of the stories of how some people got signed to a Young Money. Like that was Cortez Bryant. It doesn't matter. Convince them like, yo, th yo, you gotta get with this kid. And but yeah, he but still he stood next to him, right? And You're like right. gave him all that love and support. So yeah, Wayne was right. He doesn't need to do anything. He, he should never it. pay attention. He should not listen to anything. He should just watch ESPN and skateboard. Period. You think we're Jay good, bro? He gave I, you. Jay I, 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 I think I think Jay's not. Jay watches everything. I think Jay. I, I guess that's what I'm comparing, right? Like mm. I'm just comparing how some of the people who are legends or who we know we're gonna be legends, how they treat it. I yeah, feel like Jay the... watches everything, but definitely doesn't emulate. Or, you know, I think there was a there was a time in his career that he would stand close to, but I, I think at this point, like, of course. I mean, excuse that, I mean, just look at the type of person. When you look at who Wayne is and his trials and tribulations and mm -hmm. where he's at, Jay, his trials and tribulations, where he's at, Drake, same, it's like, totally different person. Like, to like, Wayne is totally different than Jay is. When we taking out rapping and just had him as a person, look at everything he's going through and the shit he still goes through at this point in his career. So do you give credit to, to Wayne a little bit more 
in terms of him just kind of being in a bubble and just creating shit that will just shift culture to him. And Rather him shifting I, I, to culture. I just give, I give a nigga credit as just being one of the greatest niggas to ever get in the booth, ever. Like, you, you know, like, to be, to be putting out music from nine from the 90s, to being in a group with the Hot Boys, starting Squad Up, because before it was Young Money, it was Squad Up, being a part of that, switching from wobbity wobbity to fucking rapping, mi killing mixtapes, dropping classic albums, selling a million records in a week two times, Fuck, I don't go fuck do if you don't know who nobody is. Like, exactly. for real, it's like, what, what else, else do you want from Yeah, him? what else we want? Like, come on, he got it. Just want him to be happy at this point. <laughs> Literally, just be happy and have fun. I was a little concerned that he was still sipping lean, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't okay. know if anyone's going to point that out, but he was definitely sipping lean while he was in the interview. And with his health scares in the mm -hmm. past and a couple young artists, you know, going through some stuff and also passing away, I was like, I'm going to just point that out. Okay, fair to be I don't concerned. Be, I don't want to be the D.A.R.E. program. Yeah, like, yes. You do want him to be happy and <laughs> healthy <laughs> with this, man. All right, you with that, yeah, our show I'm having today. a hand man Wayno in here. Ooh, we're just No, 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 crying. don't even, don't even say that. Knock on wood, where's wood? Don't even say that. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, if you want to send us some fan questions, hit us on Twitter dummy? at Everyday Stroud with two Never G's. Done. See you tomorrow. He was looking for the wood after you said knock on wood. Where's this guy? What part of Harlem you from, bro?